The Essential Education Projector Range from Hitachi sponsors ICT programs. Hello and welcome to a Resource Review ICT Special. Today, the past meets the present as our panel explores three modern teaching aids for primary history. A CD-ROM all about Florence Nightingale. A museum website about Anglo-Saxon life. And a CD that compares toys from the past and the present. Recommending today's resources, we have Colin Henson, a freelance educational writer. Joining Colin on the panel is Kate Ruttle, Deputy Head Teacher at Great Heath Primary School in Suffolk. And we also have Dr Grant Bage, Director of Learning at Nesta and a member of the Historical Association's Primary Committee. And our resident ICT investigator, Matthew Tosh, will be putting the resources through their paces in the test lab. So Colin, let's begin then with your first choice of resource, which is the CD-ROM all about Florence Nightingale. Tell us about it. Well, this is a multimedia package uh, called Why Do We Remember Florence Nightingale? Uh, and this is a CD-ROM that's being produced by the Florence Nightingale Museum. So clearly the resources that are on there, the pictures, the sounds and so on, all the materials that are on there and the drawings as well, come from a, an impeccable source, if you like, and, 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 and a fantastic resource for people to use. OK, well, thank you. Now let's go over to Matthew for our first visit to the test lab and see how he got on with Why Do We Remember Florence Nightingale? This CD-ROM is an HTML-based resource, which means it's basically a website on a CD-ROM. So if you're familiar with navigating using a web browser, you should have no problems getting through this. Now all the sections are laid out very similar to this one here and you can navigate through the text and images just by using the arrows on the bottom right hand corner. Now some of these are discussion activities but some are actually quizzes and it could be a little bit confusing for pupils if they don't know exactly where they're supposed to be heading. Particularly this one here where you match up sentences you could end up with some quite bizarre combinations and the program will just let you run on. Now quite a few of the pictures on the CD-ROM allow you to add text to them and these are the pictures with the little ABC in the top left hand corner. If I just click on it like that then a text box comes up, if I type in bed, hit enter and the word is added to my picture and you can add lots of words to your picture like that and maybe print it out for some project work. But beware though, should you navigate away from the page and come back again the words have gone so you need to be careful about how you navigate the way through. Now, in addition to all these resources, we have two very special features on the CD. One is a tribute song to Florence Nightingale, and the other is a recording of her actual voice at the age of 70. I think that's incredible to hear her voice for real. Now, on top of all this, you've got your teacher's notes at the bottom of the screen and some additional resources. Again, you might want to use this for project work. Now the CD-ROM requires a Java-enabled web browser and also QuickTime to be installed. Both of these are standard features for most school web browsers. As regards actual web programs, I've run the CD-ROM on Netscape and I did encounter a few problems with the sound. However, Firefox and Internet Explorer both seem to cope okay with this. So that's our Florence Nightingale CD. Back to you, Hermione. Well, Colin, Matthew gave us a great tour of the Florence Nightingale CD-ROM there. Who, how do you think teachers should use it? Is this really more for whole class teaching or pupils working on their own? My feeling is that it's of great use as a whole class teaching resource because you saw some of the images there, which were the, the, the pictures and the text next to it, and you can just imagine it being well used by the teacher uh, and the pupils that surrounding him or her. So, for instance, when the pictures uh, can include text, when you can include text with the pictures, you can do that as a whole class uh, activity. All right, well, somebody who's actually used it in a class, Kate, uh, how did it go down? How did you use it? I used it with small groups of children because it says on the back of the box that it can be used in these individual ways, right. and I did it with a small group, not with a whiteboard. And it was, it needed an awful lot of teacher mediation. Even with high ability year two children, there's too much text and it's too challenging. The children aren't going to persevere that long. The thing which the children really, really loved was this particular 
um, sequence of pictures because it is so graphic seeing these wounded soldiers being put onto the carts or being carried on the backs of their comrades and then being put onto boats and then going all that way across the sea and that was the bit the children kept on coming back to. Grant, what did you think? Well, I thought it was uh, fantastically rich visually and that's what I loved about it. It's a little sort of family drawing of uh, a group and then there's another picture of, of, of Florence as a very young woman and uh, you can see what a sort of serious character she is and I think that's what I, is glorious about this as a resource for me is that is the sort of rich support for exploring Florence as a person. I think more could be made of, of her as a woman. I mean she's a woman in a man's world, a very privileged woman by the way from a very privileged background and there's lots more that could be made of that. But I think that you could do that actually, not just at Key Stage 1 but at Key Stage 2. I know this is aimed at Key Stage 1 and with yeah. inquiry questions, but actually for Victorians or at Key Stage 2, I think this would be a fantastic resource. All right, well it's time now to move on to Colin's second choice of resource, which is the museum's website. Tell us about it, Colin. This is a website that's been put together uh, by the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford and it's based on their Anglo-Saxon collections. So here we are, Anglo-Saxon discovery. Right, now the reason I chose this resource was simply, I, I, I feel sorry for the Anglo-Saxons. Uh, <laughs> stage two history, they get squeezed. They get squeezed between the Roman invasion and the Viking raids. Uh, and the option to study uh, the Anglo-Saxons isn't taken up that much by teachers. And I think one of the reasons for that is simply that there's a lot of material on the Romans, there's a lot on the Vikings, but the Anglo-Saxons in the middle is that sort of middle brother or sister that sort of gets ignored a little <laughs> bit. And, uh, and that's a great pity, because I think it is an extraordinary subject to study uh, at Key Stage 2 History. And I think that the website produced by the Ashmolean Museum uh, is, is a great resource to fill in that content. All right, well thank you very much. Matthew's had a look around this website, so let's go over to the test lab and see how he got on. We have a really interesting and creative website here. This is the Anglo-Saxon Discovery website from the Ashmolean Museum. A lot of the pages feature pictures from children. And you can see here our start page has got links on it and each picture is an actual link to different sections of the website. I'm going to click on the start area to get our journey underway. Now each section is further divided into pages and you can either click on the continue arrow at the bottom or jump to a particular section. And as we move through there's a good balance of images and text. I'm going to go and have a look at what did the Anglo-Saxons eat and drink and if I click on this bowl down the right hand side we can see some questions to engage the children. And if I click on the question, wait for it, we get a pop-up. And if I hover the pointer over the top, then the answer to the question comes up. You'll need to allow pop-ups from the website in order to view it properly. Now you do have access on the website to a virtual version of the Ashmolean Museum. It's like a virtual gallery. We can see lots of cases here. And if I click on one of the cases there, we can see the exhibits. We can enlarge that image, make it a bit larger. Good for printing out, maybe for project work. There are loads of pictures here. Now there are also some activities and games on the website. You can have a go at dressing a Viking in traditional clothing like this. I did notice though if I ran the website through Netscape or Firefox the pictures didn't seem to want to drag so Internet Explorer seemed to be the one to go for here. There's another activity if you want to test out your trade and negotiation skills you can go on a little journey through uh, a, a traditional village. There are teacher resources, uh, links to national curriculum and teaching activities and also there are some printable activities sheets that you can use with your pupils. To find your way around really quickly it's worth having a look at the site index. It's got links to all the pictures on the website and all the different sections. There is a wealth of information here and you're probably going to need more than one visit to appreciate its full value. <laughs> Well, Colin, I find the children's illustrations absolutely charming, but isn't it more important that children see the real thing and interpret for themselves rather than seeing other children's interpretations? Uh, well, that can be done on the website because one of the joys of the Anglo-Saxon Discovery website is pictures of objects themselves that come from the Ashmolean Museum. The children's drawings, I think, are a great addition to this website because it shows what can be done. So the teacher, he or she, can show the drawings that have been done by this particular school for this okay. website and say, OK, this is an inspiration for you right. also to do your own drawings as okay. well. Okay. Well, Kate, did your pupils find it inspirational? They enjoyed it. Needless to say, they went straight to Anglo-Saxon death. 
Oh, of course. Because <laughs> I, I did Wouldn't this you? with. Oh, of course, I did this with a class of Year Four children because Year Fours often study the Anglo-Saxons. The problem they had was there were too many options. Right. That you know, you've I've just clicked once, and I now have to make a choice here, and then I have to make a choice here, and then I have to make a choice here, and that's too many choices. Grant, is this something that you thought about the site? Teachers would really have to choose what their pupils would do before letting them loose. Yeah, I think that um, that probably children, if, if you're posing a research question perhaps for them before you start might be a good way of using the site because there are some amazing objects and remains and artefacts in there. And I, I think probably a bit of teacher structure for using the site would bring out the riches of the resource you know, to the fore. Mm. I mean, picking up on your point about, about it being so big, I mean, one of the things that teachers can obviously do is if, for instance, if in a, in a class uh, pupils are working in ICT pairs, which yeah. is quite a common thing to do, then what you do is you zone the, the website. Absolutely. So you say one pair look at this area, one pair look at this. I think that would be the way forward. Well, thank you very much. Now let's move on to, Colin, your third choice of resource, and it's the Magic Grandad. CD-ROM about toys. Tell us more about this, Ron. Well, this uh, uh, CD-ROM is uh, linked in with what's the Magic Grandad series. It's something that all Key Stage 1 pupils will be familiar with and comfortable with, and that's the reason I chose this particular one. So the toy CD-ROM that, uh, that we're looking at now is really less about content, I think, than more about historical skills. This is about pupils learning about how to differentiate between old and new objects, in this case toys, how to establish a sense of chronology uh, um, and also looking at uh, what's changed and what's remained the same throughout, throughout different periods of history as well. Okay, can we have a quick look at some of them? Sure, okay, well let's have a look at the toy poster because I quite like this one. Okay. Uh, and what you have here is a collection of, of toys um, which are old and new, so there's a, some detail here about an old toy called Cup and Ball and uh, Magic Grandad tells you about that, but then you can go on to a task and this is a very nice task because it's to do with design. And if we just click on the cup and ball again, and wait for Magic Grandad to stop talking. Okay. Then, oh, then so there is get, audio with this There's as well, audio with it as well. So, so Magic Grandad is telling you what to do, again, which is great for some who may not be confident with reading and so on. So that's lovely. So you start off with, with choosing a main picture that you drag over there. You then choose your headings and so To make your and poster. And so on. You make a poster. Well, Kate, what did you think? When I tried it with Year 1 and 2 children, they weren't fascinated enough by the subject to listen to Grandad. What they wanted to do was to click and for things to happen. So when you slowed them down and got them listening, it was very good for their listening skills, then they were interested, but I wouldn't leave them just by themselves because they simply wanted to click. But a All lovely right. resource. So good otherwise. Grant? Well, I'm a big fan of Magic Grandad the TV, and um, as, as, as most teachers of history in Key Stage 1 are, I think that the, this doesn't translate quite as easily as, as I wanted, uh, but it does give you a very structured way of exploring toys, and toys are very close to children's hearts. Yeah. So. Okay, well thank you all very much, that's all we've got time for, but to recap, the three resources that we looked at were... Why do we remember Florence Nightingale from the Florence Nightingale Museum Trust and Advisory Matters? Anglo-Saxon Discovery from the Ashmolean Museum and Magic Grandad Toys Today and in the Past from Sherston Publishing Group. For information on the resources we've talked about today, go to our website, it's teachers.tv forward slash resource review, or if you want to, email us resource review at teachers.tv. Thank you to our panel, to Colin, to Kate and to Grant. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye. Essential Education Projectors from Hitachi sponsor ICT programs.